I did the dirty picture. We hardly had two women on set. The conversation that I had with myself was that you know, either I change my gender or I stop making films. To the point that I started dragging my own chair, you know, and making space <laughs> to get in. Even making it to the poster was more difficult than getting the paycheck I want. Everybody, welcome to the Ovo Mania Roundtable. I'm so thrilled to see all of you. What a spectacular group this is. So I'll just take two seconds to just gush about all of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, O Womania is a report on women in entertainment. It's been produced by Omax Media, by Film Companion. It's presented by Amazon Prime Video. The truth is there isn't a lot of data especially with regard to gender on the Indian entertainment industry. So, Ovomania is the first of its kind. Our hope is that it will really trigger conversations, which hopefully will trigger change. Uh, the research looked at 150 films across theatrical and streaming, as well as streaming shows, uh, and how women did um, on camera, off camera, and the answer is not very well. But we already knew that, right? We didn't need to look at a report to know that. What is really startling is how drastically that not very well is. Um, if you just look at some of the numbers, um, one of the findings was that across the top 25 media and entertainment companies, only 10% of the senior leadership positions are held by women. That 10% is also true for HODs across the 150 streaming shows and films that they looked at. 10%, uh, that's all. So, Vidya, I want to start with you. Um, you have been a game changer, I think, for the narrative of women in film. Uh, for me, the dirty picture was the one that flipped it around in 2011. And you've kind of sort of steadfastly walked down that path with all your films, including the last one, Jalsa, right? Uh, but the dirty picture was more than a decade ago. Why is this change so slow? No, I think firstly, uh, I see it as a very huge change and a positive one. I know when you say 10%, it doesn't seem like huge, but considering uh, that, you know, uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when I did the dirty picture, we hardly had two women on set. Today, when I see that much more women, I'm like, you know, so even the 10% is yeah, a big so one. When, when you say 10%, it's like, no, 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 that's not possible. But that's because we didn't have women at all yeah. 10 years ago. We barely had an AD or two or a costume assistant. The costume department invariably has women. Um, so I think, uh, I don't know what's taking that much longer, but or why it's taking that much longer. But I do think that I've worked with two female directors. And on their sets, we had a lot of women. On Shakuntala Devi, for example, um, most of our unit was com comprised women. You know, our DOP was also a woman, uh, Keiko. And I think the more women you have in uh, the uh, deciding positions, you know, for example, your director or your producer, or, then you have more women in the team. And I think that holds through uh, true, um, across the board, even in the corporate world, I'm sure that holds true, you know. That's, that's actually exactly right. That's right. what the research shows, that when there is a woman who's green lighting the project, when there's a woman at the helm, the number of HODs who are female doubles. Okay, and it, it even cascades down to the amount of time women get to speak in a trailer. Mm. It's 59% more if there's a woman green lighting the project. It's just startling how immediate the the effect of a woman in charge is. But I want to get in the rest of you here. In your day-to-day -day experiences in the film industry, why do you think it's, and as Vidya said, of course, it's a long way from the 10 years ago, but why is it still 10%? I mean, why aren't more women getting hired? What I seems to be the I don't think they take women and their perspective too seriously. There are times I myself as an actor give my opinion and it's not like my opinion is not good enough for it. It's, I believe in it, 
but sometimes people who are in the controlling position will constantly make you doubt that what you're thinking is not what it is so much so that after a period of, period of time you start believing in it and that's the worst kind of um, and I feel like that's why they just walking up the ladder becomes even more difficult and it, it, to reach a level like what Aparna has been able to do is I don't know what it takes because if a woman is constantly made to feel like she's really needs to double guess herself every time uh, I don't know what it takes I think you have to just you know then sometimes it's about uh, being you know almost rude and you know stick it out and say listen you have to take my opinion more seriously and sometimes you have to be literally in someone's face and put your you know say it's either take it or leave it otherwise I feel like politely to bolna is like, doesn't like kind of seem to work which is very scary because why should it be like that why should a woman have to lose her feminine touch or why should she have to uh, you know uh, really tap into her androgynous side to be able to put a point across so I feel like it starts on a very humane and a basic level and it's such a it's such a seed level that I don't even know how to kind of walk up from there. Actually taking, uh, she's made very two very important points. So I've been behind the camera. Started working as an assistant director, writer and now producer. So in my journey literally I reached that point where uh, the conversation that I had with myself was that you know either I change my gender or I stop making films. Because that's the point that it can bring you to when you're constantly um, made to prove or work twice as hard as any man in the room to be able to put your opinion forward. And that, I think, has been a struggle for everyone across the board. Uh, and secondly, a very important point that Tamanna makes is the masculinity that one has to kind of project. You know, when I started out as an assistant director and I worked with some uh, uh, female directors, and HODs, I realized that there was a very conscious effort to have a very masculine authority projected on a set. Um, uh, the, femini the feminine side was uh, deliberately kept under control in your language, in your demeanor, in, your, uh, in the authority that you projected. It almost seemed like they wanted to be a man in a man's world. So this is something that I've noticed as I've been on sets and, uh, and it continues. Um, yeah. Uh, till date that women uh, uh, in these positions feel that the authority is masculine and it's so inbuilt in us that we curb our feminine side mm. no, but may I just add my experience because I'd also started out as an AD and I was <coughs> left out of most outdoor schedules because mm. you know I was a liability I just, you had to share uh, a room which mm. is a problem yeah you know and where are the loos yeah. oh, yeah. you know mm. it'll just be a problem there would never, you know, when there was a meeting, there was never any place for me to, you know, opine or say anything to the point that I started dragging my own chair, you know, and making space to get in. There would never be a pause, you know, for me to even say anything. And then I'd hate myself when I'd go back home Absolutely. thinking, oh my God, I really wanted to make a point, but I just didn't get a space to say it. And that is why when I'm on this side of the table now, I may, it's intentional, it's mindful, I ensure that there is a representation and everybody has some space to put their point across. It's important. Yeah. No, which, Parna, let me yeah. add to that a very important thing what um, 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 uh, she just said that you know uh, even after the Me Too movement you know uh, to answer uh, Vidya's thing that is 10% but it seems a lot the Me Too movement happened and what was the general reaction of the uh, people who are hiring the HODs, the directors, educated directors, you know, this movement is all good, but we are going to hire lesser women. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Because uh, when you have conversations mm -hmm. with these very educated, they're all our friends. I'm not talking about people who are outside a certain circle. They're all our friends. They're all educated. We're working with all of them. And actually, the drawing room discussion is that me too and all is good. But you know what? It's a headache. And I'm not going to hire a female crew. And it was a complete uh, turnaround to what we were trying to achieve. So to answer the question, why is it so slow? I think they're still going around in circles. Yeah. We, we go two steps forward and we go four steps back. Because somewhere, um, literally, if, if we just talk about cinema, I feel on screen and off screen, we are literally playing into the male's fantasy of what a woman should be. Be it a character on screen or be it even a woman's uh, role off screen. Costume mein hai. DOP, um, producer, 
you know, who did she sleep with? Like, I'll give you a personal experience. So there's a uh, gentleman whose film is coming out. He's a director. So when my film came out, uh, um, he publicly called her and said, um, um, you know, she's she used a man to get here, and she used a man to get her credit. Now his film is coming out, so sh should I ask him that, so who did you sleep with to get this film? <laughs> or uh, or uh, who did you sleep with to get your credit? It's, you guys are laughing because it's obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. But no, why are you asking me that question? Yeah. And, and there were women who supported the director. There were, um, there were media houses that supported the director because it blew, up, it blew up into an issue. And then I was also called out for why do you have to talk about everything? I'm like, excuse me, I'm not a chair. I mean, uh, what do you mean? Because the whole idea is that a good, successful woman should also be graceful. Now, these key words like graceful, good, uh, ideal, I think this is the biggest hypocrisy of patriarchy. Mm -hmm. And we are still playing our roles here. I think that's where it's a very deep rooted thing that we're also playing into the hands of, which kind of, it's kind systemic. of comes out. It, it's absolutely. systemic. It, it starts from social behavior. Absolutely. It starts from generations worth of conditioning. I've worked in industries outside of entertainment also. It isn't much different. It's just that conditioning has changed over the years. More women have been in decision making roles. Awareness, exposure, sensitizing has come in. Why I say it's systemic here is that the real issue, whether it's 10% or a higher number or the rate of change, it's not an inclusive thought process as yes. of now. Our last two years have had 100% films that have been fronted by women, yep. women protagonists. We have six directors as we speak who are shooting their films with us. It's a statistic I'm very proud of, but I'm assuming we are kind of skewing that number instead of it being something that's accepted and, and taken on board industry-wide. So I think until and unless we get systemic sensitization, for, for mm. lack of a better word, this will remain. More women like Aparna, women decision makers, HODs, Priya and what she does, directors, the ones in front of camera. All of this will change, but it has to be systemic because otherwise we will not put out stories that represent women correctly, which will lead to that much fewer women coming to cinemas. It's changed, I can tell you this. I mean, there's been an unintentional skew towards making stories that feature women, led by women. I've seen this change. We did Kahani back in 2012 to now 10 years. The kind of stories that are coming, the kind of empowerment that's happening to storytellers is, is strong. It's yeah. there. It's moving. I mean, it's very positive. I'm very bullish about it. All these unfortunate experiences exist. But if it goes deeper, if it percolates down, that's when true representation in these numbers will start changing. Yeah. <coughs> But yeah, I, I need to bring that you. That could in. also yeah. happen only with regulation. Because see, anywhere in the yeah. world, in any industry where uh, these kind of things have systemic problems have been dealt with, it only happens with regulation. But what does that mean, Rima? Does that, that mean for like, for example, in Germany, I think they've achieved about forty percent women in the workforce, and that's only happened with regulation. You have to mm -hmm. hire these many people in a, mm -hmm. in any kind of uh, mm -hmm. professional setup mm -hmm. across industries, whatever you're doing. So it has to be looked, you know, it has, again, like I was saying, I don't think it's individual cases yeah. of women being put down that is actually doing this. Mm. This is happening because, frankly, nobody wants to work at this. It's not important. It's not seen as something that uh, women are not seen as 50% of your population could actually be this productive. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Actually, it also suits no one for women to be that productive or have a voice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You know, yeah. it, mm. it doesn't so say it kind of. Yeah. You it's know. not in the scheme of things. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Just to add, just to add yeah. to that systematic bit, you know, uh, you know, we're also systematically told um, that you know, female, um, uh, that men are not interested in watching women-led films, and women are interested in watching yeah. men uh, That's so films. True. That, and That's so true. Yeah, but why are we, we talk, like as a writer or when I speak to producers, as now that I produce my own films, I literally have been talk, drilled while I've been, you know, uh, talking to people that, you know, you're telling me that half the population is not interested in the other half. So these biases and myths have to be busted. Mm. Also, you know, I feel like as I approach 
on uh, female actors now to uh, you know spare my films i feel that female uh, actors are taking much more risk the a listers are taking much more risk than the men because the men the male heroes have been told that if you star or feature in a female led film your market value goes down yeah. that it is your power in the in the whole equation goes down so these myths also need to be addressed in a way that you know we we start looking at it differently in a very systematic manner again but and you had said this to me last time we talked yeah exactly you, said, you know for example the pandemic um, has become an easy excuse for people to say now female led films will not work in the theaters because basically our industry is going through some kind of flux i think where a lot of our films are bombing terribly and they are hero led your so called male hero led films but who takes a beating is a female led films so very easily you don't realize that gangubai kathiawadi was had no man exactly. spearheading yeah. it you know it was alia bhat mm. that film has done great numbers compared to a lot of other films which have male heroes mm. so it's very frustrating because there's no logic to it what do you say they say nay you know it's um, it's tougher now it's a tougher market now so look at also the economics mm. of the films that have male heroes yeah. you know That's our right. films are far more profitable yeah. Yeah. yeah you know over the years yeah. mm. even i i think uh, i can only speak from my own experience but my worst flops have also made more money than some mm. of the biggest mm. if you had to just mm. see in terms of ratio of course the budget mm. is not as big but you know uh, how do you make sense yeah. of this and so these numbers should be out there they they encourage people to make more films with the female led heroines no and I'm, i'm very grateful for producers yeah. like vikram malhotra you know who still have that faith and who still we keep talking about films for ott but also films for three theatrical. theatrical so you know he's not close to the idea ki like you know, <laughs> roi is better <laughs> it's a happier set <laughs> you, women you, right women of course <laughs> look it's not just on the set we have 60% workforce at my company which is women across functions by the way very proud of all of this and and it's actually not even something that one looks at now it's it it's how it's driven but vidya and i uh, you know we've done three films in the pandemic and a fourth one is is now shot and constantly we've looked at how we've gone more confident with each film the next one we are saying it doesn't matter what flux which situation we are in we are taking this to theaters because if it's a good story you'll have enough and more women and men by the way we've seen it across films where i mean whether it be a kahani or a queen where there have been enough and more men who've come to theaters to to watch that but i think it comes down to conviction for me it's uh, definitely great content and if you're doing this kind of work there must be financial viability to it as well right and to with this point from a box office point of view i've done this analysis if you pick up the last 50 films that have had women protagonists you're going to find an alarmingly higher success rate as compared to the overall industry average and it underpins the roi there amazing ah, and the film is saying yes really? <laughs> it's there no i also want to be making so many if it wasn't <laughs> no i also want to add to what kanika said you know so many times in the past i've been told um, just around the time that we're releasing the film and gearing up for promotions ki you know this is not a female led film while well, i do hope that some day we are able to do away with the so called female led mm-hmm. tag but i'm saying don't run away from the film that we've made mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. don't be apologetic nay nay kya hai na if you position it as a female led film mm-hmm. men will not come for it <laughs> only women will go for it and i'm like so nay kya hai na dirty picture mein sex tha so i say acha to kahani mein kya tha pregnant woman thi <laughs> how do you explain that you know because yeah. if, uh, if you're talking about my films i'm talking about the ones that did really well yeah. theatrically and uh, you know for example even a film uh, like mission mangal which did great business mm-hmm. finally it will be seen as an akshay kumar film which is very unfortunate it's not akshay kumar and five other leading ladies or you know because we're not being seen as having led the film in any way yeah. but just akshay kumar 
you know the the film the story couldn't have been told with just him or wasn't told with just him so these are i i just wonder sometimes like someone was talking to me about my last hits and they said they didn't mention mission mangal so i said mission they said nee par wo akshay kumar tha so i was like <laughs> did you, you not see me there <laughs> yeah exactly did you not see me and four other actors you know female actors you know the funny part is as vidya talks about biases i feel like there are so many biases that women also have about women which we only haven't overcome and no wonder men have it too like i worked with uh, uh, aparna you only greenlit that project it's called ji karda uh, and uh, arunima sharma directed it and she was way into her pregnancy and literally i thought that is the pandemic how is how is arunima going to shoot a film with seven actors uh with three completely different world like there a lot of location shifts lot of movement mm. uh, i really wasn't sure how the shoot will even get completed uh, but i have seen my director shoot for 55 days straight almost for 12 to 16 hours and she used to really get physical like she would like jump on mm. our table and start mm. explaining us what to do and we had to remind her behan aap pregnant ho aap aisa nahi kar sakte but like she didn't she was unabashed and she you know i think for me as an individual the imagery of a pregnant woman has completely changed yeah. i will never ever be able to think that a pregnant woman needs to be taking the kind of uh, you know the kind of delicate notion that people have that a woman needs to be even when she's pregnant or when she's expecting she's uh, pregnant she's not disabled exactly you <laughs> don't know the difference exactly and and i feel like for me that was such a game changer when i saw her do so many things that i never thought a pregnant lady could do yeah and yeah. uh, no and we needed to work behind the scenes yeah. to make that happen expedite a lot of things we knew and we worked yeah, yeah. because well, we really wanted to work around yeah. i think yeah. only a woman would we green light a project which enough. probably another woman had to shoot through her pregnancy i think yeah. Yeah. huh Okay. Disagree. Women are the only you. You know, I'm saying as long as long as we. I, mean, I don't mean to take away from yeah. your point, but I'm saying as long as we keep thinking this is special stuff, it has to be treated. The word <coughs> came from here. It's Logistics, a business exigency. Yeah. Mm. It's how you are planning anything. It's like right. if a man was to undergo heart surgery, a director, and <coughs> it had to be lined up three months from now. The sensitizing has to come from the fact that yes, a producer and a platform and a studio will take care of these things, much like they would take care of health Absolutely. and well-being. Yeah, in the <coughs> ideal situation, I'm saying, but it's not very common, which is why I'm saying that it probably Absolutely. took. You know, that's what I'm saying. No, let me let me tell you what the very disheartening statistic from Ovomania was with regard to female directors. Uh, it is that of the 56 theatrical films that were considered, oh, uh, not one. has been directed by a woman <coughs> yeah. not one or edited by a woman oh. uh, really yeah it's it was i was like man oh. that's rough so yeah. tell me tell me reema and neeraj uh, why i mean direction is the top job uh, is that why there's such a hurdle to women in that place uh you want I mean, again, you know, I, I think it connects back to what I said earlier. It's just the larger thing. It is that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you know, with OTT, I think things have opened out where again, you know, mm. people are not putting money into every ticket. It's a household, you know, b- b- buying a subscription, and you can watch what you want. Yeah. So there are women who are interested in say like content that is about women. It is there that traditionally, like they're saying, when you know what the point that Vidya made, if it's a female-led film or so woman story, you think that men are not going to go and watch that, which I don't think is necessarily true, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's the that's the bias that people are working. Yeah, with. Yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. this. Uh, I mean, what we're really uh, fighting is not bias against women in the film industry. What we're really fighting is bias against women. in the world yeah mm. that's the problem Fantastic. it's not about one person say i mean you know you're a really strong woman both of you so if somebody came and put you all down i don't think it would affect you all you will keep doing no, what surprise you know rima like i'll yes. tell you one thing for no, for no, women no. the funny part is just because i'm wearing pink and orange mm. and just because i look a certain way i'm already judged that i might not have Absolutely. certain capabilities So unfortunately on a constant and you will be surprised I'm saying that on already happens I'm sitting right next to you in jeans and a shirt I sure. will also be judged yeah. for the way I look <laughs> yeah. and who I am and I'm probably not fitting into constructs something who whoever you are 
you're going to be judged that's a given sure. do you For know sure. what i'm saying but and everybody feels that i think so i i don't think it's these individual things i think there's a lack of regulation there's you know today because we're in this talk i was trying to look up I mean, I think Womania is really important mm -hmm. because of that. I was trying to Google statistics. Mm -hmm. Statistics don't exist. They don't. Yeah. Forget about yeah. them being uh, dismal. Yeah. yeah. There was nothing. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, there's nothing. Yeah. So, I, the, you yeah. see what I'm saying? The problem is much bigger than yeah. that. Sure. Again, I'm not putting down your experience, so I'm not saying it's no, not no. true. No, no, absolutely. It's completely true. But we might see there is a way that you said oh, regulation, you were talking yeah. about regulation earlier. Like how America does it is like they do have inclusion riders. Yeah. I mean, Thanks. I would like to ask producers: Are, are we open for certain such a thing like that? It'll Look. be. It'll be huge. We've actually rolled out uh, oh, wow. an, uh, yeah, wow. a diversity, equity, inclusion playbook, and wow. uh, it's that's why it needs to be intentional. Wow. When we look at our slate, uh, you know, we look at various genres that are, that are there: action and comedy, mm. women. You know, no. do we have enough uh, stories in that vertical, uh, Vikram? You're aware. Uh, do we have women in all of our writers' rooms or not? If not, we have to have. Are fifty percent of our HOD is women or not? If not, we have to. Otherwise, we just don't read. Is that it mandatory? We have Thank to you. have it. Yeah, we Thank are very you. clear. I mean, I can't really how much but I'm just saying we have to. We are really one is hated for that, but mm. so what? You know, often the enough, I'm told. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is more important. That is that is regulation. One is told yeah. it's tokenism. Yeah. I yeah. one I was once told by this man that you know the only very good writer that the reason that I am very scared of writing women uh, characters and narrative now is because. Uh, you know, people like yourselves will jump on me and you know will say that it's not written well. So I said, that's no. why you need to have a woman, woman writing <laughs> along with you, right? I said, but I like to write alone. But maybe that should change then. <laughs> it's easy. Keep a woman writer. Anyway, you're creating an immersive world. Yeah. So we have to make it intentional. Yeah. You know, see, on a set, what happens is a director is given too much importance. Like, I want two days extra shoot, producer will agree to it. I want one truck load of lights tomorrow. Yes, it'll happen. And everyone in the crew is also very, very inspired by the director. They are really aligned to the vision and they want to do their best because they all are aligned to it. So I feel this regulation and also how both of you all are doing, plus I think the, the onus to drive it has to be director. Mm -hmm. You know, because when the director says that, okay, here's what I think has to happen, that there has to be, can we aspire to bring 50% women uh, across the board? Okay, then producer will listen. Everybody will listen and also there has to be a thing where you can you have to ensure that you have a meeting with everyone before you begin the shoot and speak to all your HODs and say that you know all of you have to hire teams respectively where it has to be and you can't do token hiring which is you know usually what they do is they hire a female intern like no it has to be in power position that you have to hire yeah. and this kind of enforcement I'm really glad and I'm happy that I no, work with you. No the other thing that we do is that there are no unpaid interns. Mm. You know, so you have to have interns, mm -hmm. uh, you have to ensure that 50% yeah. of them are women and they have to work. Of course, see, like what we have one audits, woman? we'll come and see mm. yourself. I am <laughs> so happy, I'm so, so happy I can tell you. Like, I've been <laughs> wanting this to happen for a but long time. But Aparna, see, uh, what one woman in a, in position, a decision yeah. making position, yeah. the, p the effect that she can have. Uh, with this one woman being there, sitting there, being no, but you know, the also I, I kind yeah. of want to say this one because, see, let's not keep the honors on bringing change only to women. Absolutely, because yeah. we men have to That's acknowledge our privilege and shame and say that okay, about time we need to change our the way we think. The, we we have to change our constructs like we think. Okay, the ye ladki ko nahi hoga, se nahi hoga. You know, uh, get get someone who can actually pull this off. Or like I'll tell you, the, the biases that my I personally I want to acknowledge that I also had this. Like there was this commercial that I was doing and it was about teenage girls, okay? And I spoke to my first lady and said that, you know, I, I, you know I, usually, I usually break binaries everywhere. And I thought that this one, can you get someone from cost, for costumes? Can you get an AD who's female? Maybe the parents or whatever will get comfortable. Then she told me that, Neeraj, uh, you say all of these things, but you yourself are saying, why can't a man do that? And it immediately made me correct mm -hmm. myself that, you know, it is such an implicit bias that no matter how much we thrive for, we'll always have implicit biases and we we have to acknowledge and say that, you know, we need to change. We can't be saying that, chalo karte hain. And this And also this labeling, you know, just say, uh, for instance, I want to uh, talk about Zoya, okay? Every time she's praised, she's like, 
she is such a great female director yeah. every time everything she does is about yeah. a female director like why can't we just yeah. say i'm telling you in the director. in the country the top foremost directors that i really look up to in terms of craft and everything she's definitely one yeah. of them and i don't see her as a female or whatever also this whole construct of like you know women narrating women stories i mean women should do any story and they should be lauded for everything that they do not like single out here women making women stories is is a hurrah. i feel uh patriarchal men and also men who are trying to deconstruct themselves them making uh female stories that is laudable because th- you're acknowledging your shame and then you're doing it i feel women also are equally responsible and i think we more should be more responsible right absolutely absolutely but, but why you're doing it just include a few women <laughs> 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 bring in some authenticity of and course i mean that is the whole idea <laughs> that you have to have 50% female hrd <laughs> has to yeah. be there so i want to bring your attention to priya here who works in the most male skewed field of of uh, filmmaking which is she's a dop uh, and a specialist in underwater photography uh, priya you're also the founding member of the women's cinematographers collective That's which right. has more than 70 members now are you seeing a change on the ground so we have 150 members now really wow. yeah amazing yeah. wow and um, of course there's a big difference but i'm going to put a caveat there so when i started about 20 years ago shooting I was actually one of the one or two women uh, in the cinematography department not even as cinematographers but as assistants yeah. and um, over the years it was quite slow to start with which is when we decided to start IWCC to see what's going on actually you know to put a dipstick into the country and see hey, what's happening where is everyone and everyone's functioning as you know very very actually afraid individual assistants because you always feel like I'm the only one because you never really get to see what's going on so um, The change that has been there is that now we have a large number but I think there's a glass ceiling there you know so everyone assists and then gets up to first assistant position and now again with OTT there has been a change where there are more women shooting stuff but that translation of you know that band of women who've come up to that particular level then to get an independent film that translation doesn't happen very easily so which is why the numbers you'll see lots coming up to that level and then you've got 0% or 2% yeah. so um, the change is there but it doesn't translate actually into shooting movies which i think is the you know or uh, ott work can so there is can, sorry can i add to what you're saying yeah. that uh, every time i worked and i speak to the dp and i say that uh, you know i have this thing uh, need to have 50% so it's like can you at least get a second ac to be a few? like i i know it's it's not ideal but and they say oh yeah i never thought of this and i'm talking about like many dps that i worked with everybody says never thought of this yeah, and it I, I think especially when it comes to cinematography there is a certain kind of bias yeah. you know like people consider women can't do certain things like women don't drive well mm-hmm. or yeah. you know this is a little more scientific and there's yeah. more physics and no i'm physical physical, physical. Yeah. Yeah. therefore yeah. it's not a woman's job i mean that is something that i think uh, and i'll we'll tell you we yeah, yeah please, please. please no we just shot a film in niyat which is an amazon abundant share film and uh, the grips person was woman and you know she was we were all amazed we all literally on the first day clapped for her because i've never seen uh, grips being done by a woman yeah maya the it was just maya amazing of course she's not indian but i still think it's it's amazing I, even abroad i haven't yeah. before this seen a woman and you know uh, some of it is also uh, guided by men in the context of care and chivalry it's like yeah. like i said the, the pregnant women the thing i'm sure the all the women will be like men around will be like no 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 can you put a chair can can we do this like you know let the woman decide what is okay by her and not okay by her you do not impose your chivalry on people and because of this many people think ki yaar are nahi yaar usko bahut musko mat de wo kaam usko kisi is ladke ko de de and this is i've seen these biases so implicit like it would happen on my in, <laughs> on my film actually the second ac as soon as she would go to pick up something yeah. suddenly 10 light men would go and be like nahi 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 i was yeah. like just le- yeah. just let her be just leave her alone yeah. i've worked with priya actually we did a film together uh, i had a brief sequence very brief sequence in saira uh where we worked together and i realized that women and not just while working with priya i realized this but with a lot of my uh, fitness trainers i've realized it that women actually understand women's um strengths and limitations way more 
naturally because they've also experienced it like my women trainers are less sympathetic towards me on a <laughs> bad day than my male trainers are like cuz if i'm say on my period and if i tell my male trainer that listen you know i'm i'm on my period i'm feeling low he'll just say cancel <laughs> but if i tell my female trainer she'll be like you're fine you're not in pain come on <laughs> but, but <laughs> i tell you i use that conveniently also <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so when, when it's a man then i say you know today i'm i'm charming actually so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know they make it completely yeah it's almost like we don't know this so no comments but i feel like that's what like i tell you a story when we were shooting saira we were doing this huge under a sequence and it was with uh, Chiranjeevi Chiran sir so. so we shot four days and uh, you came in later so i think yeah. we'd already shot two three days this was in a pool in kapoli and it was this massive setup and the whole crew had come down from hyderabad so when we talk about representation so there was not one woman in that whole hyderabad crew that came down from i think it must have been 150 men and there was me so we were shooting <laughs> underwater <laughs> and uh, she doesn't even know what happened actually So at one point, her crew came to me and they were like, "Can you please ask the pool uh, the pool manager to open the gate? Because he's saying women are not allowed inside the pool area. <laughs> so how will the girl go and act? No, no. So, he, so I said, sorry. What do you mean? So he's saying, no. He's saying it's a male only crew. So uh, can you just talk to him? So I went up there. I said, आप क्या कर रहे हो? So I said, he's saying, नहीं मैंने सोचा कि ये हैदराबाद से शूट है तो शायद मेल क्रू है उनको शायद पसंद नहीं है क्योंकि कोई औरत नहीं है सेट पे. I said, hello. He goes, नहीं आप तो अलग हो. Stop your people from entering. Yeah, because they were just. I think even they were in shock because they had. There was not one woman. We so I'm going to come to this. Yeah. I'm going to come to what happens in in the south. And and you know, as dismal as we think the 10% is, actually the Hindi film industry is far ahead of other places. Uh, but before we get there, let's talk about the happy news, which is streaming. And and about now, I need you to come in on this. Uh, what makes streaming inherently more egalitarian than? the theatrical world i think um, i think because the trappings of box office i Are guess do not exist yeah. and so the opportunity to tell all kinds of stories exist uh like i said and there, there is also intention to tell all kinds of stories to work with all kinds of technicians and storytellers and directors uh i guess just that sorry can i uh Is it also because traditionally all film studios are headed by men and they've all been, you know, run by men? So the stories also that they want to tell are male-driven versus streaming platforms where they're hiring women in positions of authority which and green lighting, which also is why maybe that's also yeah. the thing, like more corporatized. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I'd also like to say that you know, whenever a pitch comes to us now, Bechdel test is very rudimentary. Yeah, it doesn't. It's it's very rudimentary. Yeah. It's very basic. But at least there is a framework to begin with. We at least look at that. Mm. I mean, are there two women mm. with names, you know, talking, talking to each other else. about something other than men? <laughs> it's basic. But at least that yeah. is that at least there in the story or not. Uh, are there women in the writers room or not now i've i've often been told uh, but should we just get women because there are women in the writers room and i tell them yes doesn't matter yeah. if there is a woman writer uh, you have to have a woman writer in the writer but where are the women writers so now we have a list one ready one sitting right there yeah <laughs> so we have now have a list huh. my team and i have prepared a list and we tell them here's a list and we sure you'd find few from here okay fine <laughs> we'll get it but the it. people are actually saying where are the women writers yeah, of course Amazing. all the time so you have to make it therefore intentional um you know i mean i'd give you a very recent example there is a script that we had been developing for a while we went and heard the final narration and not one woman so i mean i i mean of course other than you know like a shy wife or you know a girlfriend and a bubbly girlfriend <laughs> bubbly girlfriend uh, something like that and you know they'd say that uh, but you know she's a driving force behind the protagonist's uh, journey but not one woman with agency so uh, they said but you know where is the space here so we looked at the script and we said okay what about changing the first name of this character just make this person into a woman and they said that's not possible the traits and we said okay let's look at the traits so she's courageous she's bad i mean this character is bad badass you know courage is is complicated is flawed is unapologetic perfect make this character into a woman reluctantly hesitatingly but the director made it but now the director feels really good also about it that you know oh my god phenomenal action and whatever but it required that kind of push 
that kind of intention. Then let, let's go back Vidya to what you said about the box office and Aparna what you're saying that because streaming doesn't have the burden of the box office is perhaps why uh, you know it can be a more equal playing ground for women uh, and the point that you brought up that hmm. if you looked at it just in terms of ROI the truth is female narratives yeah. are doing much better. Why isn't this acknowledged? Why is this just lost in the ether? The male led yeah. films unfortunately have uh, ruined the economics of our film industry. Mm -hmm. True. You know, <laughs> so I and um, I feel that there has to be a correction there. The mm -hmm. fact that so many of those films are bombing has to be an eye opener. So why don't we release more of our films theatrically also? You know, we want to enjoy the best of both worlds mm -hmm. theatrically also and see maybe these films will skyrocket at a time when, you know, um, you can't explain away films as aberrations anymore. Film. Uh, female-led films doing well at the box, box office are not an aberration anymore. There are that many more. Every actor, female actor I know, is doing at least one female-led film at any given point of time. However young, you don't have to be really established. Or so I think that says something, na? Yeah. But there is just uh, I think probably I it's threatening also for the ones who run the business. They can't it is understand. Yeah, it is quo, threatening, right? undoubtedly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And Anupma, strangely, I think it also again circles back to that same thing of uh, hypersexualization of women. It actually starts from there. See, the maths is hypersexualization of women, objects, no brains, uh, um, can't make decisions. Uh, and another very interesting thing uh, is the nuisance value that is attached by the men to women. I'll give you an example. You know, I was screwing up uh, for one of my films that, you know, we are going, taking on floors. So there were three men in the room and I suggested at this time I want a female EP. The words that were thrown around, temperamental, manipulative, can't handle, uh, uh, you know, pressure. A, a large, uh, mm. can't handle pressure. And I'm like, you know, this is a narrative which has been going on for bloody 50, uh, 100, 150 yeah. years mm -hmm. and it's still not changing. Yeah. And, in, and these are educated men who we hang out with and mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, bear with. And they're like, you know, women, temperamental. I think these labels are so uh, detrimental to acknowledging even the success or the numbers or <laughs> even acknowledging that there's a woman of authority who's going to make decisions in a room. Yeah. I'm more afraid of the future also in the sense because while I definitely appreciate South Indian films, they they are more creative. They are, every which way they are doing far more better. But the thing about the toxic macho yeah, hero archetype that has been created and it has exploded and how and it is celebrated and it is getting replicated over here and my fear is that going forward it's going to be that big ticket item it has and also we have to understand a very big point that it's not just male it's the toxic machoism that is masqueraded as superhero or great hero and it is being replicated so it will distance further i think women will be distanced further and i and i say this with a lot of fear and disillusionment that i hope it doesn't happen but there has to be a way to counter this. There has to be narratives that counter this insurgence, I feel. No, but, but I, feel I completely agree to this yeah. because I, I, I am at exactly that phase of my career where as an actor, I was just exhausted of playing the, you know, the love interest of yeah. the hero. And what was, like you said, what was the scary part is I was extremely successful at it. Mm -hmm. And I was successful at it for a very long time. But there came a point where I myself was exhausted by just playing those characters that I don't relate to anymore as a person. And today, I'm, I feel so good that whatever be the numbers i'm never i've never been good at math but i know one thing that today at least i have all the projects i'm doing i am headlining all the projects i'm doing have me playing completely varied parts like from playing a bouncer which is again physically strong to playing you know a uh, you know um, a, a, a young sobo girl to playing uh, you know a cop i think the variety that i am getting today as an actor is so much more than it has ever been and I feel like like you said it has to be a conscious choice and decision because the toxic mascul masculinity which is being celebrated over and over again is going to be celebrated hence women who are actors who have already some credible amount of um, you know uh, uh, positioning or they are already established actors 
need to take on that role where they start choosing parts which are stronger which actually have something to say and you know bring in the acting chops because at the end while we're telling stories if people don't relate to us as actors we can never really bring women in a you know in a commanding position but Tamana, women. the the actually the figures for the four south industries that were looked are at terrible. Are, are terrible are it's, terrible it's uh, the so the malayalam and kannada films that they looked at zero hod's are women uh, tamil is 1% telugu was 5% oh. so the barriers are even higher so, oh. why is it worse in the south when the content is is some the storytelling is so inventive um, especially with malayalam cinema it's so progressive why are we seeing that there's not enough women there because they're not taking women seriously whatever they might say to you to their face behind it's it's not the same they don't take it's a you. boys club it is a boys club and they will i mean your opinion is you know i mean you're there for i don't know entertainment or i don't know what that or just like a glamour quotient i've had <coughs> conversations about this with lots of people about why these south films are doing so well here you know and obviously we're trying to make those kind of films but i think um you know men are feeling threatened they're holding on to the last um what is of a mm. vestiges of uh, masculinity of authority yeah yes. yeah yes. you know by because these films are making mm. them feel like oh wow i'm so powerful i can fly and i can kick and i can you know uh, woo the woman and treat her like whatever but you know there is a certain formula to it and while these films have done great business i think the men are really relating to it saying you know this is who i am yeah main mard hu but so i think this is going to be because that the idea of masculinity is also going through um a, a transition. change yeah. a transition yeah. it's in a state of flux you know so i think that's why I, I don't think this phase is going to last too long very honestly the funny part no, is I, the one also, time i, I came I feel to think you know you can't divide the room into men and women and then feel that the men in the room are doing everything to subjugate no, the no, 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 no. women yeah. it's also women doing that yeah. because if you see if you see say uh, the comments that you get for example mm. on films or whatever whether it's my films or zoya's or the, the most vicious ones are the women the yeah. men don't even go there No, they either like something or not but the really personal comments come from women but also Now, because that if no mm-hmm. also because true. women have not had opinions of their own mm-hmm. so but they, they have do. Not, they have the opinion of they have very patriarchal opinions no no i'm saying oh. patriarchal opinions also are hand me downs that you know b- through conditioning yeah because this is what we've learned women should be like and suddenly there is a woman standing there and defying that and you're like no 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 this can't be you know sure. ye kya kar rahi hai because finally what you feel is she's threatening the man in your house the head of your family mm-hmm. because she's on screen today it could be your daughter doing that tomorrow so to safeguard yourself or your sister or whatever mm-hmm. i think i think women are also as much Uh, you know for the patriarchy as much you know like patriarchy is not just about yeah, yeah, men it's also women carry yeah, yeah, women it's as much about yeah, women and, and, like, what i yeah. mean is when i started when i was i mean and i spoke about this earlier in one of my questions so maybe i'm repeating it but you know the fact that women directors were jinxed mm. was a real thing yeah. back in the 90s when i was an ad you know and it wasn't just one person saying it that was a general belief and then farah khan came along and made mehuna Mm-hmm. and then nobody said that again ever mm-hmm. it just that notion died yeah. you see what i'm saying yeah. so i think it's a world that's pretty much dictated like like he was saying it's it's commerce it is commerce you yeah. were saying tomorrow yeah. if really there you know people did a math and it was on paper that male films weren't doing so well male led films and female led films were doing well. everybody stopped doing male led films and budget budget so you know yeah. people yeah. look at the budgets yeah, yeah. that's let's, how budgets go. let's talk about salaries yeah. and budgets oh, yeah. vikram i need you to come <laughs> in here absolutely i mean there's such a different filter that gets applied to at several levels i'm not speaking about us screw, screwing the 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 pattern but the reality is that if you look at every aspect of of a film's value chain so oh so this is a female actor film all right itni fees legi right oh abhi to pichli film mein itni fees li thi oh uh, uh, ye woman oriented film ke budget itne nahi hote this is reality this happens today 
for us escalation of budgets is to be seen very differently for women films than for men hmm. films acha wo aur budget hogi lekin ye iski recovery nahi hogi itna paisa kyun salaries that get discriminated down to the lowest level of the workforce that happens here right if anything needs to be regulated the first thing we need to do is bring in parity there yeah. right and and we have absolutely no the south at least has some form of of structure there but in hindi cinema we don't have those structures we need to bring in that parity and you see the change will happen from the top so if today a vidya balan film does brilliantly and gets rated as amongst the top film whether on ott or gets a box of his opening why should there be discrimination down the line about how a fee would escalate yeah. it's about time that we we stopped hiding behind these artificial clichés of a big action film fronted by a man is the formula for success yeah. super success yeah i think those are the kind of <laughs> myths that need to be totally destroyed immediately then you see how the 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 representation side changes yeah. then you see how the inclusivity starts coming in because suddenly commerce will drive ours is a business commerce will start driving that change backwards as well well i'm so happy about this uh, study that's happened and this data yeah. because you know this is going to make the invisible visible yeah. you know and it's going to allow us to have some of these conversations yeah. in a very non confrontational manner yeah. because <laughs> here it is that's we're right. not saying yeah. anything it's not we're my feeling yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 it's the truth i mean yeah. the only way is say for example like how you uh, you guys at amazon have guidelines mm -hmm. you know that has to be you know if say if the producers unions could get together and do something like that or on a larger level if there's legislation that is pretty much you know out there regulating uh, men versus women in your company yeah. the company law board <laughs> mandates the number of women on boards of directors for public listed companies of different mm -hmm. shapes yeah. and sizes i mean and dare anyone not do that because they are now all therefore under legal mandate that they required to do that yeah. so i'm saying yeah. that's a great way by the way it's yeah. happening in the larger corporate world around us they're yeah. putting women there in decision making roles women are climbing right to the top and it's flowing down yeah okay i'm almost to the end last two questions vidya and tamanna where are we on pay parity uh, this is something <laughs> that keeps coming up uh, and oh, i'm always told yeah but the day a woman opens a film <clears throat> to the 50 crores she will also get the 100 <coughs> crore paycheck obviously that's a given right it is a business it's bums on seats at the end of the day but i've also been told and by a lot of women that even if the two <coughs> people are equal even if there's a male actor and a female actor who have the same level of hits or success or whatever it is invariably the man will be paid more is this still a fact of life in your experience uh i think so it still is yes i think so <laughs> um sometimes it's angered me that uh i've i've done films where my <coughs> my role was probably better and um i put in more effort <laughs> i'm probably even more successful than the male actor in terms of the number of hits i have to my credit and yet the male actor has gotten paid more though you know lately i've been doing um the so called female led films not lately but, but you know there are very few uh, other films that i've done in the past 14 years and therefore i'm i'm not sure i'm completely I, i'm the right person to comment on this except barring those experiences because if you look at the overall budget of the film the ratio of the budget that a man gets is what i get in the films that i lead mm -hmm. except our budgets are peanuts compared to what they get so where there films cost 100 200 crores for example and they get a big chunk of it if you compare just ratios yes, yes. you know uh, on a film that costs 30 40 crores then the ratio of the overall budget that i'm getting is the same but in a film where i am um you know where there's a there's me and there's a male hero the parity is unbelievable it's it's unbelievable what's yeah, in, no, what's in it is and well, sadly yeah. it's mostly for actors 
It if is you see right, crew yeah. or writers or technicians, the pay parity isn't as bad. Mm. But when it comes to actors, I mean, it really sucks. Well, the funny part is I've been a part of these huge uh, pan-India films mm. and uh, you're talking about pay disparity. I'm talking about even making it to the poster was more difficult than getting the paycheck I want. And um, it was funny how I promoted both these films aggressively because I feel they're my films. And that as an actor, I feel because I, I love what I do and I enjoy doing it, so, so I do it. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was very interesting to watch when, when the men would not attend the promotions, nobody was spoken about. But I might have missed out on two promotions and uh, it was like there's a problem with me and the producer. So as women, pay disparity is honestly, in my opinion, a very long distance away. We are still kind of battling with these kind of issues which are not even, I don't even think should happen and especially at, at a level when you've already commercially established yourself. And I feel like, like, sh like Vidya said, today I as a female, as an actor, I am probably more successful and more widely known than many of my male counterparts. But I'm still struggling to make it to the poster. Like in a in a in a respectable fashion. Yeah. So pay disparity, I don't even I don't even know if I think I should comment on that. Okay. But we live in hope and good things will come. Absolutely. And therefore I want to end this by asking each one of you what is the one change you want to see? in the film industry and not uh, um, something that's, that's, that can happen in, in the next year. Priya, let's begin with you. I think, well, I'll speak from my department and um, just seeing down the line cinematographers who are coming in, there is still this thing about, we're still at that point where women can only shoot a certain kind of film, men can shoot a certain kind of film. And you know, it is still not agnostic to the kind of content because it is still driven by, which is why I'm sitting here because I keep getting asked this question, how come you shoot action films? So, so um, at least for that, you know, at least start looking at just cinematographers as cinematographers and let content just be what has to be shot. Yeah. There is no superpower that men have that women don't. Indeed. Absolutely. Vikram? I'd love for more women to become the captains of the ships, more directors. You know, when you support a first time director who happens to be a woman, I just feel that it not only gives confidence to those many more like that individual, but it also bolsters your confidence and the confidence of the ecosystem to say that there's more. So I'd love it if there's fresh talent that comes in, more women take charge and as these leading examples that we have here? Well, I think uh, I would want to see more young people not bother pleasing everyone, not worry about what people think about their opinions and women especially coming out and putting their opinions strongly, uh, not fearing to be panned because that's what I see mostly with, uh, with the younger girls. I feel like they just do want to offend someone and in the process they forget what their own opinion is. Yeah. So uh, have stronger voices and uh, eventually the idea is to come into a leadership position so that you can make a change. But for that to start with, you have to hold your opinion really strongly. Reema? Uh, I think I'd just, you know, what I was saying earlier, I'd just like to see uh, better rounded female characters written, even if the film is uh, not about her or the content is not women oriented, you know. It's just a regular uh, run-of-the-mill film about, I don't know, a bromance. But even in that bromance, can the girl be a little real? Like somebody <laughs> who actually exists on this planet. <laughs> no <laughs> bubbly for you. Yeah, yeah. The bubbly is, is just, you know, I'm sorry. I promise I'm coming up with a bubbly yeah. that's not the bubbly you're no. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's no. a different bubbly yeah, altogether. Yeah. 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 I actually thought it's a condition to be bubbly all the time. Yeah. Like, in yeah. all scenarios whatsoever. It should be a password. I sincerely suggest. First stop when you start a film, like bring in all the HODs, have a meeting with the producers, say that this meeting is purely entirely about how are you going to make your teams. 
okay i'm i may go a little more extra when i said not just women but also went into lgbtqi dalits and muslims and all of these things but can we start the dialogue can directors feel responsibility that you guys can bring the change mm -hmm. it'll not come through that whip yeah. won't happen if you guys don't think that is my only thing yeah. with you I'd like uh, an equal number of female hero films to be made. <laughs> and I hope someday we don't have to mention, you know, uh, that it is a woman oriented film and also if someone can tell me what oriented actually means because you know does it mean that you're orienting the film only for women? I think it's problematic there. Or that uh, you know, I, I don't know. or uh, it's really women oriented is a huge problem but la most importantly i think there are enough female heroes uh, whose stories need to be told and even in the so called male hero films we should have female heroes aparna i actually feel quite uh, i'm feeling hopeful yeah i feel that all of these initiatives that we've taken you know we'd see the impact of that in the coming years mm -hmm. i feel hopeful i feel like you know all kinds of stories are being told there are good characters there are well rounded characters and hopefully we'll start seeing them i mean you know some of, <laughs> all of them are part of some of those stories yeah. uh creating some of those uh, i feel quite hopeful uh but a lot needs to be done and i think we'll keep chipping away at that <laughs> that's all yeah. we have to do is persist yeah yeah <laughs> Just bring our chair into that room and keep talking about chair. it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. One change that I would hope for, because you know I worked behind the camera on the set, etc., in various uh, positions. You know I'm going to throw some light on the practical aspect of it. Uh, as a newcomer, as a girl, as a woman trying to make her way up, I think we need to be genuinely committed, have systems in place for creating a very safe working environment. for a woman because i can't do my best if i have to fend off skirt chasers or egomaniacal power trips or i don't have a a, a body where i can go to a, a system or organization i can go to with my grievance and say that look i'm not allowed uh, to do my job so help me out here i think we have a huge gap where we are not creating safe uh, working environment for the girls we are not giving them the confidence that come here do your best and we are we have your back i think we need to do that at a very conscious level but, as uh, there are i mean it's mandatory mm, now it's for mandatory. every uh, it's mandatory now have that. but so let me somebody i mean just because i don't want to put the wrong message out there if somebody is going through something like this and your workplace doesn't have a committee or somebody that you can actually take this up with you should complain about them Yeah, because that is not legal anymore. There is, anymore. Is, there is a so many times the person who you are going to complain is about whom you have to complain because there are so many committees but where the people who are. Yeah. But that's I'm saying there are. So all I'm saying is that keep keep care of yeah. things like so that. So all I'm saying is that I'd like to see that system flourish hmm. sure. and be very accessible to of an intern and or an actor. Listen, yeah. yeah. I I <laughs> think. just the fact that you are all here you're all in this room and and you're all doing such wonderful work also in terms of just pushing the needle um uh, is is amazing i've had the best time and i know we could be here for the next few hours because there is so much to share but i think i think it's going to get better aparna i'm with you i'm hopeful uh and i know that it things will change because they have But they are not the same. The very have. fact that we are sitting here having this conversation yeah. is proof of the fact that things are better. Yeah, and I think headed in the right direction. direction yeah, of course. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much thank to you. all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.